I like it when you return. I'm John Zadar. This is May 10th. It is Tuesday, and you're watching On Top and Hot. Now, what I do here is I share my DD that I come across through the day. And today I found three stocks all related to earnings that had strong price action. However, each one has their own reasoning for why they were moving. Not all the same. So let's jump on into this and see what I got for you. Now most of you knew exactly where we were going, over here to the OTC markets, right? The reason I come here is because it's updated every single day by the FINRA and the SEC. Why go to Google searching through years of old information, right? This is never outdated, always current. So we are looking at the company Affluence Core, ticker AFFU. Finished the day, oh she's dropped. Yeah, just a little bit ago, she was at 20%. We're now at 18.5%, finishing the day at 0 0.0339, almost 3.5 cents. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. These are important ticks. Make sure you see these. Well, it's good on every stock, but especially on a pink stock. So what does AFFU do? Well, they tell us here that they're focused on software solutions that capitalize on the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and 5G technologies. Now, there's not a whole lot of information to be gotten, so I did jump over to their website. Now, their website hasn't got a whole heck of a lot more information either. That's the whole page. There's no more to be gotten. But, along with telling us what they do, they also inform us of three subsidiaries that they have acquired. And I wasn't aware of this. Now, I don't know when they got them, but at least now I know they have them. Affluence Engineering. Affluence has acquired RAS Engineering PA, which is a telecom infrastructure engineering and design service organization. The second one is Affluence Digital Solutions. Affluence has acquired ISLP, a diversified technology company focused on telecom services and technologies. I'm seeing a trend here. And the third one, Affluence IoT Solution Builder. Affluence has acquired OneMind Technologies, who build intelligent Internet of Things solutions to help organizations transform operational decisions and reveal insights through real-time, multi-domain intelligence. So you've got an idea of what they do. If you do more DD, I'm sure you can get more information. And we will get a wee bit more just looking at the headlines of the news. Now, speaking of news, there was no catalyst today. No, not really. But there was some run. And as far as I can tell, it is related to their earnings. But their earnings were almost a week ago. But I'll show you how I've come to that conclusion. So what was the relative volume around this company? Well, she normally does 272,000. Today she did 412,000. Not exactly double, but almost. Share structure, what sort of float we got here? Oh, not bad. We got 30 million in the float. I go to the unrestricted shares to get that number. That is a pretty good float. And when you compare it to the unrestricted shares, this is all for the management, institutions, hedge funds, stuff like that. Shares that will not get on the open market. They have like 13 times as many shares in the management. That shows how important this is to them. They're holding a lot. They've got a lot invested. And their financials. Well, that is really what this is all about. And I'm going to get more information as we move along here but you can see at the end of last year they did almost a million dollars nine hundred and thirty five thousand gotta grab those three zeros throw those right behind there so you could see it was growing from zero in 2019 to two hundred and one thousand in 2020 to nine hundred and thirty five thousand that's huge that is a giant jump so you've kind of got some expectations of what we're gonna see right and then you come over to disclosures now we know that they've just had an quarterly report right there it was one week ago exactly and we're not going to actually jump into it but we're going to get some information about it but i was coming over here to see if there was any 8ks or anything like that nothing here so let's just jump on over to the news now the company is working on their internet of things their telecom projects and that's what most of this news is about Affluence Corporation subsidiary One Mind Technologies announces launch of situational awareness solution for airport 
terminals. Then here in December, they were awarded a major contract for their software solution. Uh, then you got here in January, Fluence Corporation strengthens Internet of Things product portfolio with the acquisition of Siteware LLC. I haven't jumped into this. I'm not going to do it right now, but you see they've got another subsidiary. At least it looks like it. Then here in January, Fluence Corporation's One Mind Technologies named Command and Control Software Solution for world's largest smart city project. They have control of a city over in the Middle East. They've got all these contracts, and I don't know what's all involved, but it's becoming a smart city. There's another one down in Mexico that is being handled by another company. It could be this company, but I don't think so. It was news I read about three or four months ago. Then you've got these three pieces of news here. This came out in March, this one came out in April, and this one came out in May, and they all have to do with their quarterly reports. Affluence Corporation announces record 2021 and Q4 revenue, and its first ever positive EBITDA quarter. That was the one we just looked at for December, 900 something thousand dollars. Then Affluence Corporation gives updates on first quarter projects and Affluence Corporation announces second consecutive quarter of record revenue and earnings in Q1. And just to get an idea of what's going on here, revenue growth was 363% year over year. Huge jump. Revenue growth of 27% in Q1 2022 from Q4 of 2021. It's the largest net income quarter in history. I'm extremely proud of our team and delighted to announce record revenue of $550,000 for the first quarter of 2022. We just saw they did almost a million dollars in the entire year last year. That was the whole year, $935,000, $985,000. They just did a half a million dollars in three months. So business is definitely kicking for this company. However, the stock was moving today. It had some good strong price action in the morning and ended the day up. So why was it running today if this was back on May 4th? Well, I'm only presuming here it's a hypothesis, but I ran over here to Twitter to try to get a little bit more information. Well, everybody was talking about that quarterly report, bragging about how much money they had made. Of course they were. The only other thing I found was this. This came out yesterday, May 9th, new 52-week low today. Now, I thought that is an important thing to have great earnings and have a 52-week low bubble at the same time, you're probably going to get a very strong bounce off of that bubble. So I wanted to know how many people were posting that. So I looked. Nobody. This person was the only person, Swing Trade Bot was the only person to actually notify everybody that it was on a 52-week low. The other one happened back in February, 52-week low. And then it goes all the way back to October of last year, 52-week low. But I found this interesting when I looked at the chart. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, as you were expecting, we're looking at AFFU on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform that you can have. Well, not mine. <laughs> Go on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for a free account. They're not going to ask for any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Shh, I didn't say that. But seriously, just keep your account open and you can use this bad boy just like I am. So we are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart for AFFU. She's been under that 200 virtually the entire time. She hit it twice, but didn't make any advantage of it. She's basically been sitting on the 200 hall, which is a technical most people don't have. It's like the 200-day SMA, but it gives more credence to current time. And she's sitting on that right under the 50. Pretty much was pinched in between the two until here recently, when she fell away from all of it, hit that low bubble, which was two days ago. There it is at 002. Now they said it was a 52-week low. We've got 26 weeks here. Let's take a look at one full year. Absolutely is a low bubble. But in saying that, consider this. She is rolling downhill, right? And there's nothing down here. So wouldn't this have been a low bubble when it hit it? It didn't bounce. Wouldn't that be a low bubble? Of course it would. And this one over here, sure. So what makes that low bubble special? 
not much really except for the fact and this is why I pointed it out that there was a tweet now that was only one tweet there was no more tweets and there's only been three tweets in the last six months right and there's been a lot of low bubbles in the last six months but only three times has anybody drawn attention to it and one of them is right now with all the volume that was happening after really good financials I mean they did a half a million dollars in three months that took them oh probably six months to do the year before and if you remember looking at the annuals they went from zero to two to six to nine or maybe from two to nine they are growing at leaps and bounds and still doing it so they've got impressive fundamentals though the chart does not show that let's come on down to that 20 day one hour view so she's been under the 50 hanging on to it she keeps putting a hook up there so she doesn't fall too far hit that low bubble yesterday went sideways and jumped she was under the 10 worst place she can be is under the 10 even if you're up high you're under the 10 it means you're going down that's the very first SMA you broke so she's gotten above that above the 20 did break the 50 pulled back and right now is sitting on the 200 day haul MACD is coming up it's under the signal line but showing strength RSI is tempted right now and the CCI is actually on a downhill motion but in the green just a quick flip could lift this stock coming down to that five day five minute so we had a high here of a nickel just about five days ago in that low of two cents and right now we're at a median of three and a half cents MACD is above the signal line, but boy, she gone flat here. Really flat, strange movement. Uh, RSI is in the mid 50s. I would like to see it no lower than 60 if you're expecting growth. We do have the CCI, the Commodities Channel Index, above the center line, which is strength. Uh, it needs to come up a little higher for it to actually start growing. However, this stock has shown to have fundamentals the company it's got strong fi uh, financial revenues coming in really strong so i expect this stock to actually grow if anybody's paying attention to it go do some more dd folks learn more about this company with that sort of income coming in they went 330 percent year over year and i just can't see them slowing down at this rate so AFFU could be worth your DD. Remember what I say, the more you know, I'm just going to go to the next stock now. All right, this next stock we're taking a look at is a NASDAQ stock. They also had news today about their financials, though it was a bittersweet cup. There was bad news and good news. The financials themselves were bad. They were bad. But the estimates they gave last quarter were beaten. So, the price went up today. We are looking at a NASDAQ stock, Varum Inc., ticker VRM. They finished today at $1.43, just over 32% gains. Now, to tell you what this company does is quick and easy. Just come over here to their website, buy your next ride entirely online, and sell us your car. They buy and sell cars all online. Now, as I said, there was news today. So what was the relative volume wrapped around it? Woo, pretty good, actually. Over 12 times as much volume. They went from 12 million to 149 million with bad financials. What are their financials? What have they been doing? Oh, man. Whoa, look at that. Remember, folks, we've got to put three zeros behind all those numbers. So that is $3.1 billion they did last year in revenue. And the year before, they did $1.3 billion. So they actually more than doubled last year. And then they had financials today. So let's just take a look at the information with regard to those financials. So this is the information. We're not going to go into a lot of details. We're just going to look at the bidder and the sweep. Here is the bidder. Varum Inc. on Monday reported a loss of $310 million in three months. Holy cow, they lost $310 million. And the stock went up. Why? Because their estimates were beat. Down here they tell us that they had estimated $874 million. They knew it was going to be down, so they estimated low. Well, they beat their estimates, estimates 
up to 923. So beating their estimates, I don't know, it's kind of like, well, management didn't blow smoke up our skirt. They gave us numbers and look, they beat those numbers. Maybe we can trust these people. I don't know how to figure that out because they actually lost money, the financials were worse, but they came in over what they were told to expect. Let's go take a look at that chart. Wow, we look at that high bubble on the six month, four hour chart for VRM $27.75. She has fallen all the way down, never touching the 200 to a low of 91 cents. And right now, and that was yesterday, right now we're at $1.43. Now I'm curious, I'm going to go back one year just to see what the high was. Woo, look at that $46. And she was over the 200 back when she had that high. Let's come back down to the 20 day, one hour look. So she's been under the 200 until today. She's been hugging the 50, sitting on top of the 200. Careening downhill until the last couple of days when anticipation of these financials were coming and people were not confident. That's what this is. This is a sign of no confidence and it fell. Look, you see the bubble there? That's when the financials came out and she hit a low bubble. Everyone is expecting it to be bad. Now this is a very tricky thing, playing financials, folks. Do you play them before they come out and hope for that home run and hopefully not get tagged out on your very first base? Or do you wait till after the earnings come out and maybe miss a little bit, but have the assurance of knowing the facts? Personally, I like to get in after the fact, unless I really know something more than just a guess or a hunch, I'm going to wait until after the fact. Lots of people didn't think it was going to happen and they sold off here. And let's come on down to that five day, five minute to get a better feel for what they were doing. Boy, look at that. She shot quick. She hit that low bubble shot straight up over the 200, over the 50, once over the 50, had all the confidence in the world, jumped up to the 200. Went sideways on the 200 a little bit, and once this 50, once that 50 crossed the 200, what happened? Boing, she shot. That is a technical sign. We look for the 50-day SMA to cross the 200-day SMA. You'll normally get a surge in the price there. We definitely did. She's taken off and she got all the way up to $1.93 out the gate when the bell rang. She fell the next five minutes down to $1.89. Then the third five minutes she fell to $1.83. You should have been out. If you had gotten into this any time, and you could have played this pre-market, absolutely. You could have gotten into this aftermarket yesterday or pre-market today. Looking at the technicals, right there would have been a sign to get in. It was going to climb. You don't know how long, you just know at this point in time, she has power to be pushed up. And she did. Pushed up, came down, bounced off. So, if you were still in this, saw it fall once, saw it fall twice. Well, that is confirmation. She's changed directions. And if you didn't get out then, you probably lost everything that you were getting from this stock. She came all the way down here. Crossed the 200. This was looking bleak. I'm sure everybody thought she was just going to go hellbound here, but actually started consolidating, turned around, and started back up, crossing all of the SMAs again. Finished the day on top of the 200 haul and is now again climbing after market. So she actually looks like she wants to continue climbing. Beating estimates is all that's really got this climbing because they lost. 310 million. Now, I don't know the intricacies of why they lost it. There may have been a deal, a merger, there may have been an acquisition, a debt paid off, something. There could be a good reason behind them being down on this quarter. So, some DD can definitely pay off. Looking at the technicals, MACD is falling right now, about ready to do a negative crossover. Looks like she just moved as we've been talking. What was that price? That was that. 555, uh, 525, yeah, that just happened right there. So she is still having activity as we're talking. Uh, RSI is falling, CCI is falling. So everything looks like it's falling, but this bounces a lot. It falls hard when it falls, 
but she does do a lot of bouncing. You've got to really read the technicals on this one. But I kind of like this one. If losing 310 million wasn't enough to keep her down, then maybe she'll keep rising. But do your DD. That's the best thing you can do. So the last stock we're taking a look at today is on the OTC market and they had news today about their financial earnings. However, their earnings are not yet out. What do you think they said if the price was going up? <laughs> this is ticker SSET. Name of the company is Starstream Entertainment Inc. They finished today at a very luscious and juicy price, 0 0.0095. Now the reason I say that, it's just under a penny. A penny is a fantastic place to buy a stock. What happens when it hits two cents? You've doubled your entire investment. Hundred dollars is two hundred. A thousand is two thousand. When it hits three cents, just the next digit, you've tripled your money. Four quadruple. You get to ten cents. You have ten times your money. Now stop and think about that. If you wait to two cents, just one more penny on the price, no big deal. When it gets to ten cents, you've only made five hundred percent gains. At a penny, you've made a thousand percent gains. Ain't that better? Yeah, twice as better. The company did 23.5% gains today. They're on the pink tier, they're current, and they've got those oh so precious green ticks over there I tell you to look for. So they look good. So what does this company do? This is the best part of talking about SSET. They tell us here that the company's business strategy is to focus on event staffing and brand building for high profile clients through our subsidiary FaceTime Consulting Promotions. So they staff events for high profile clients. I can't say much more than that, but I can show you. And a picture is worth a thousand words. So I'm going to jump over here to their website and give you an idea of why they're so popular. Remember, they supply the people to staff these events. Now, do you think maybe they've got a good thing going here? Now, I'm not making any suggestions. I'm not saying anything. The pictures say it all. So, the company has had news today about their earnings and it was going up. So, what was the relative volume? Well, she's normally doing 125,000 shares. Not very good, actually. And today she did about three quarter million, about five times as much. What is the share structure on this company? About 84 million. Now, that's not a low float, but it definitely is not high. High. 1.4 billion. That's a high float. This is decent. 84 million. What are her financials? Well, they are making money and some pretty decent money at that. Putting those three zeros behind there, we're at 1.2 million dollars. More than double last year. You can see every single year she has been increasing. And they have news out about their financials right now. That came out today, the 10th. Let's take a look at that news. They tell us here that Starstream Entertainment Inc.'s wholly owned subsidiary, FaceTime Consulting and Promotions, is expecting to report record numbers in the company's upcoming Q1 quarterly report that is soon to be released. While numbers are still being finalized, we believe that the Q1 revenues will total last year's Q1 and Q2 revenues combined, more than doubling the revenues over the previous year to date. Folks, that's some serious jumping. You've got two quarters combined into one quarter, and they say that that is nearly going to double the revenues of the entire year last year. Sounds like a lot of money to me. Recently, the company, through its FaceTime division, added a wearables and promotional giveaway production division, which is adding additional value and contributing directly to the company's profitability and bottom line. I'm not quite sure what the wearables are. Uh, I'm not going to make any guesses. They've got some beautiful staff members. If they can do anything to get staff members closer to the people coming to these events, it's probably helping them. So let's go take a look at that chart. See how high it got because it probably fell because the market was really volatile today, folks. We were up there in the 32, 33 VIX range, which is the volatility chart. Let's go see what we got. 
So SSET is doing just like the other stock. She's been running under the 200 for most of these six months. She did have a breakout here back in October, though I can't really tell you why. She went from roughly two cents to four cents. So she did have a 100% gain there in a couple days. When she came through the 200, that was all she wrote. She has been falling ever since then and hit a low bubble here of 0067 and coincidentally that too was yesterday so all three stocks we looked at today hit low bubbles yesterday and are all bouncing off of them today she has gotten above the 50 but pulled back just a little bit and all of the technicals are pushing up right now but not with a lot of strength let's come on down to that 20 day one hour look all right, so she has been under the 50, but that's probably because she hasn't even got a 200. Nope, no 200 on the board here. So she's been paying homage to the 50-day SMA. She has fallen down here to 0067 and jumped all the way up here to just over a penny. So that was almost 80, 90% gains. But she fell all the way back here to just under a penny, sitting on top of the 50-day SMA. That is prime position. We had lots of volume down here too. Let's look at that five-day, five-minute. All right, so she hit that low bubble yesterday, recovered 50%, dropped again this morning, and then took off. And she moved all the way up to that 101 and pulled back. And look, now we have a 50-day. We don't have a 200, barely have a 50-day just started our 20 day that shows you how light the volume is when there's not enough shares there's not enough data if you don't have enough data you can't bring in an sma with all that data so the 50 day sma has just come into the picture and we're actually sitting above it now she could fall down to the 50 but this is a setup play no, I'm not making any pun on the ticker SSED. This is a setup play. They've already told us that they have earnings coming out. And I looked at the uh, disclosures. They had a disclosure on the third month of this year, which means they probably have one in the sixth month. So we are in the fifth month. I would expect it early in June. So you have time to get in this. Now, if they keep pumping this, it could keep rising. This could be a very good price to get in considering we are on a low bubble. And how big was that low? Does that actually go back a year? It sure does, folks. Now, again, these were all low bubbles, all of them. But this low bubble is coming at a synchronized time of good news about financials that are going to explode. So a low bubble can easily push this through the 50 up to the 200. When you get on top of the 200, you start to grow. And over the year, what was her high? She was at six cents. Six cents, but I don't know what she was doing back then. She may be in a better place now, just bad price. But the company's doing better, the price is just doing worse. All right, let's come on down to that 20 day. No, we already looked at 20 day, didn't we? We were down there to the five minutes. So, as I was saying, I think this has more to give. I definitely think it has more to give, and I think now probably is a good time to get in. I wouldn't put everything in on it right now. I would probably buy 40%, 40% of whatever I wanted. You gotta know how much you want, though. You want $500 worth, you want $1,000 worth, or are you a person who likes to buy shares? 10,000 shares, 100,000 shares, whatever it is. Don't get it all right now, because you don't know if it's gonna fall any further. And if it does, and you've only bought 40% up here, when it comes down here, you can buy another 20% cheaper and bring your price down. So when the earnings come out and they're really good and this thing jumps, you're going to be at a terrific price and make some better gains. So we have just taken a look at three different stocks that all dealt with their financial earnings. One had great earnings. Another one had really bad earnings, but they beat their estimates. And the third one had real strong projections, and they were all going up. Another one that had earnings today was Kronos Cannabis, but they lost $35 million, and it has been climbing all day. Apple, just a little while ago, did tremendous earnings, $92 billion, but they predicted that they're going to be doing $4 to $8 billion less next quarter. So they did not run. 
see, financial earnings are really tricky to invest in because there's a lot to look at. The estimates from last quarter, the projections for the next quarter, what's happening this quarter, lots of things to consider, and lots of times if every box isn't ticked green, it will fall. So you got to be careful doing your financial earnings. Me, I like to get in after the fact, not just to know what the earnings were, but to see what the investors feel like. You can't trust the numbers. You got to trust the technicals. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you.